In this tutorial, we will look at a more practical use of Rotopaint. We will be using a shot from Gala Walker with kind permission from Jack Bauer and Blake Jew 730 Limited. We will also have a look at the extra tools that we have in Rotopaint over the Roto node. I'll start off by making a series of brush strokes. And if I turn this on, or similar icons, then the brush is adjusted by pressure sensitivity. Now if I use the eraser, and you can also use the eraser on your Wacom pen, I'll just press shift and drag to change the size of the brush, I can erase back to the original background. I'll just create a different coloured brush, and note that using the tool settings here affect only this and future paint strokes and I'm going to paint over the array strokes. Now because the layer list works top down, this is now on top of the array strokes. But if I move this layer below the array strokes, they are now cutting through it. And if I move the stroke back, it is back on top. So the order is important. We'll have a brief look at the other tools before moving on to the wire removal. With the clone and shape tools there are a further set of parameters available which you can access here, which are basically the clone tab from the properties panel. So with clone, to set the offset, press Ctrl or Command plus Shift then drag. This sets both the source and destination at the same time. Command or Ctrl and drag however sets just the destination point. Again, Command or Control and Shift to set both source and destination. I'll just delete these paint strokes. Now something to remember when you are cloning is that because a translation is used, you can often end up with a soft, filtered clone. Like this. So the trick is to turn on round, which changes the translate to the nearest pixels or to use an impulse filter which has the same result. Now we have a nice sharp clone. OK, I have a checkerboard with frame numbers on coming into the background 1 input of the Roto Paint. The reveal mode is similar to the clone mode except all translation functions are greyed out. However, I have this extra parameter that lets me set the time offset of the incoming image. So if I reveal with an offset of 0, as you can see we are on frame 68, we're revealing the background at 68 also. If I change this to 10 and stay on relative, then I'm revealing frame 78 from the background input. And if I change that to minus 10, I'll reveal frame 58. If I change this to absolute and again type 10, I'm revealing frame 10 of the background regardless of which frame I am on. Again, if this is relative, I'm revealing 10 frames ahead. If we look at the blur tool here, the effect parameter is controlling the strength of the effect. In this case, it's the same as a blur of 15. Change it to 5 and it's less strong. The same is true of the sharpen tool. Here I'll change it to 30. you can see it is much stronger. With the smear however, although the effect parameter is available, it has no apparent effect. And lastly we have dodge and burn, and the strength of these is controlled by the opacity parameter. OK, now we'll look at a practical example of the clone tool. We'll go into this area of the rope and using Ctrl or Command plus Shift, I'll set the destination and source offsets. I'll check that I have the filtering set correctly, and we'll just clean up the wire either side of the rope. Now I've forgotten to set the lifespan correctly for these strokes, so I'll do that in the Properties panel. 
you also need to remember that they were created on frame 51. So I'll set their lifetime to all frames. And I have a tracker here that has tracked both sides of the rope. And I'll just set its reference frame to the frame I created the strokes on, which was frame 51. So I'm now going to add a new layer or group and call this Rope Cleanup. And I'll move both of these two clones into that layer. Now into the Transform tab of the layer, I will copy the tracker's match move parameters. And now we'll see that these strokes are doing a pretty good job of removing the wire throughout. However, as we drag through you can see there's a bit of a drift going on. So to fix this, I'm going to go into the clone parameter of the strokes and sort it out there. So I'll select the stroke, go into the clone parameter, set a key. I'll just turn off overlay for the moment by pressing O. Now if I adjust the clone, I've repaired the left side of the rope. Now if I do the same with the other side, I'll set a key, set a second key and move it over. Then I've repaired that side too. All done, give or take, using two paint strokes and a tracker. Now we'll have a look at the hood section here. This time I'll use a shape to remove the wire. So I'll create the shape and adjust the join to the hood. But instead of using the colour, what we'll do is we'll switch the shape to foreground. And then in the clone tab, we'll remove the wire. OK. Here I have a tracker which is tracking the hood and the wire crossover. I'm going to set the tracker to stabilise and then in the rotor paint while viewing the tracker I can rotor the stabilised image and this makes it easier to see what's going on. So now we have a roto which is following the shape of the hood. But this is working on the stabilised image and we want it to work on the original image. So I'll take our roto and I'll put it into a new layer which I'll call hood cleanup. Then I'll take our tracker and I'll convert this to match move. And as we did before, I'll copy the animation across into the translate parameters of the layer. The advantage of using a group here is that even though there's only one shape, I can still differentiate easily between the shapes keyframes and the tracks keyframes. Now the roto is following the original footage. This method also avoids match moving a rasterized image, which would be the case if I had added a match move after the roto paint node. Now if we look at the actual join itself, we can see that it's a bit sharp. So I can go into the Bezier and adjust the feather and bring back the fall off to get a softer edge. Then we can improve this further by utilising the Ripple Edit mode. I'll turn this on and I'll adjust the shape here, plus I'll soften off the join with individual point feathering. And because ripple is on, it has adjusted the shape throughout. Now we have a smoother, more complete 
clean up. In the next tutorial we will look at painting through geometry.